I'm Chas, and you're watching Chas's Crazy Creations. Just wait till you see all the projects we're making today. I found these little rugs at the Dollar Tree and grabbed two of each of these colors. I knew they would be great for pillows. They also happen to be my kids' favorite colors. I laid one rug down and then I placed the other rug directly on top of it, tags facing in. I then peeled back one of the sides and used hot glue, ran a line of hot glue down the side and sealed the top rug to the bottom rug as I went. Hot glue is an easy no-sew option, but you could easily sew this if you like. I then did this to the other long side as well, hot gluing all the way down and pressing as I went. Once both the long sides were done, I went to one of the short sides and repeated the same process of gluing and pressing as I went along the short side. This left one side open for a pillowcase effect. I purchased a 12 by 16 pillow insert from Walmart to put inside this pillowcase. I stuffed the pillow inside the pillowcase and you could choose to leave this end open. I like the idea of being able to pull the pillow out so I can wash the pillowcase. Some other options might be to seal the final side so that all four sides are closed. You could alternatively use some Velcro that is self-adhesive to close it as well. Here's a look at the final pillow. The blue pillow is for my daughter, and now I'm going to repeat the same process with a second set of rugs that are red, and this will be for my son. These pillows were great for home decor, but they also were great for kids reading on the floor. For my kids, I know they're going to use these watching TV. Now let's move on to the next DIY. For this project, I'm going to be using pillow covers that I found from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using a variety of folk art stencils for this project. The first thing you're going to want to do is take a piece of wax paper and place it inside the pillowcase. This will stop the paint from bleeding through to the other side. Next, you're going to need to add some stencil tape to hold the stencil in place. And you'll want to do all four sides for the most stability. All right, so my stencil's in place, and I like to use a paper plate. That's just me. And for this one, I'm gonna be using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. I just like it, but you can use any fabric. This is not a fabric paint. I mean, it can go on fabric. It's very versatile, but it's not specific to fabric. But you can use fabric paint. You can use acrylic paint. Um, a good thing to do is kind of spot test, though, because I have learned that some paints, when you start to stencil, they are not opaque enough and then it ends up kind of thin, which that part stinks because then you're going back and fixing it. So the best way to describe stenciling, you'll hear me talk about pouncing. I had one lady who made fun of me for that and said it sounded like something a cat does. So <laughs> um, I don't always think of a cat, but I get it. Um, so basically you are gonna, what we call load up your brush with the paint and then you want to offload as much of that paint as possible. And it seems a little crazy and why. If there's too much paint on your brush, it will bleed under the stencil. And that's when you end up with gobbly gook or it soaks into the fabric and spreads. So you load your brush, then you offload as much as possible. So it's really about patience. So as you can see, I've got it pretty loaded up. So I'm going to do this to get a bunch of the... See now, when I get to the end here, it doesn't have as much coming off, but if I were to put that much on there, it would really make a big fat mess. Then you just pick where you're gonna start, and you really just go up and down. Now some people like a swishy thing. I always end up getting bleed when I do that, so for me, this pouncing just goes up and down onto the stencil so that way it's not moving sideways or underneath the stencil. So for me, this pouncing action works the best, but you just have to do a little experimenting and see what is the best for you. Now you'll catch that I'm gonna get it on my fingers, so if you don't like that, you can always wear gloves. Then this process just continues, dipping your paintbrush in the paint, offloading as much paint as possible, and continuing to stencil until the entire stencil is covered in paint. Now, I love this 
chalk paint because it cleans off my brush easily. So that's something to consider when choosing your paint. And you can also choose other colors, but you'll want to be careful of bleeding between the colors. So clean your brush, maybe wait for the first round to dry and or make sure it doesn't touch the other so that you don't end up with crossover bleeding if that's not something you want. Once you are done stenciling the project, you'll want to remove your stencil right away. This will prevent your stencil from sticking to the paint and or peeling the paint up with the stencil upon removal. So it's important while this paint is wet to still remove the stencil carefully. Here's the completed pillow. I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'll remove the wax paper and put the pillow in. Now let's take a look at some other pillow cases you could make or other fabric opportunities. Again, remembering to put the wax paper inside, place the stencil on top, add the stencil tape to hold it in place and begin painting the stencil. Once the stencil is complete, carefully peel it up and then let the paint dry completely. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use these other pillowcases to decorate seasonally in my home. Now, in addition to that, what I love about these pillowcases is that they pull apart and fold flat in my storage for the next season. So they don't take up a lot of space and you can use the same pillow for all the different seasons. Now, in addition to that, you can make them for evergreen, which means for year round. So you can make some that are seasonal, some that are for to be left out all the time. And then these also make wonderful, wonderful gift ideas. Now, let me teach you a little tip or trick. Remember that first pillow I did? Right, well, I'm taking that same pillow now, I have flipped it over to the other side that was blank, and I'm gonna stencil the other side with a new stencil. Now you could use the same one or a different one, but you can get more bang for your buck. And another trick beyond that, I have used one side of a pillow for one season and then flipped it over and done a different stencil for a different season. So you can leave that pillow out for basically six months of the year and cover two seasons with it. Now here's a quick look at my pillow that I'll be using and all the different pillow cases that I've just made. So I'm gonna take that pillow case and I'm gonna stuff the pillow inside and zip it closed. And I hope this inspires you to make some pillowcases of your own and just stencil fabric in general. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog at chaffscrazycreations.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.